Good evening, people of Alteryx, people of the internet, people of all over. Welcome. This is day one of my 30-day Alteryx Advanced Certification Challenge, where I'm going to show you how to earn the Alteryx Advanced Certification in 30 days or less for free. What have we done today? This is day one. As David Goggins would say, it's day one, and I won't complete that sentence the way that he does. Here I am in my office where I work and teach. Terrible lighting, glare off of my forehead, whatnot. And what did I do this morning? Well, I woke up bright and early before anybody else was awake, came down here, uh, made myself a cup of coffee, jumped on my computer, failed the certification test. So great success. Day one of the 30 day challenge is a big win with an initial loss. Now, failing the test was my intent. Uh, let's take a look at my results here and I'll talk you through it real quick. Eh, maybe I'll be, I wish there was kind of some happy medium here. All right, let's go with that. Failing the test was what I intended to do. Um, and so that was a wonderful success. You can see I got a 60% there. Zoom in a little bit. Hey, look at that, 60%. Um, now the test is two and a half hours long. That is 30 minutes longer than it was the last time I certified. I only ate up an hour and 45 minutes of it. Thank you for completing the exam. You failed. You may attempt to pass the exam again in seven days. I may do that. I'm still toying with that idea. We'll talk about that a little further. Okay, so initial impressions of the test. It is quite different than the one I took two years ago. August of 22, I initially certified on the advanced exam. <clears throat> Pardon me, still shaking off the uh, tail end of a cold here. So it's coming up. I'm gonna. It's gonna expire this August. June's a 30-day month. I love 30-day months to do 30-day challenges. It's just a thing. So uh, what's different from the last time I took it? Uh, a lot of things. Number one, it's two and a half hours now. It used to be two hours. That eases the burden quite a bit. I felt I didn't feel rushed at all. Um, a couple other things that I'll talk about. As I went through, it, the test used to cover specific sections and it would have five, no more, no less, five multiple choice questions on each section. So there'd be five questions on regex. There'd be five questions on apps, there'd be five questions on macros. It's no longer so cut and dried. The um, Let's take a look at the study guide here. Um, so you can see the percentages by functional area are kind of all over the place. And then when you look at the tools that used to be kind of a, you know, there were like seven functional areas, seven times five is 35. There were 36 multiple choice questions. One, one, I think macros got one extra question, but everything, each of the seven functional areas had five questions, no more, no less, except for the one like February 29th. And then there were four practical application questions. There are now three practical application questions, and I'll get to that. The big difference is the points. What What is valued? What do you get points for? It used to be that the practical application portion of the test was about 50% of the score. So each of those four practical application questions was you know, in the neighborhood of 16, 17% of the overall grade. And it's a multiple choice answer. So you work through the workflow and then you pick one of the four answers on the screen. Now, the the most common mistakes were represented there as answers. So it wasn't there to trick you, but it was difficult. You couldn't stumble your way through it. You had to nail that thing. And so the fact that it was a four option multiple choice meant a couple of different things. Number one, you had to actually get the answer. The, the, the most common wrong answers were there as options. Number two, um, even if you didn't work the problem, you still had a 25% chance of getting about 17% credit on the test, which I think is why they changed that. There are now three multi or practical application questions, vice four. The other thing is the three practical application questions each are worth 
four points, which works out to being about 8% of the overall grade instead of 17%. So each PRICAP question is worth about half of what they used to be. And there are three, not four. So the practical application really is about a quarter of the total points available on the test. Um, so that is is vastly different. It used to be like missing one PRICAP question meant you were borderline sunk. Now, the other thing is they've dropped the cut line. So the pass grade is now only 71%, whereas it used to be 80%. So all of those are different. Um, I will say when I went through the test, so I went through all the multiple choice questions and there are things on the test that weren't on there the last time. There are things on the test that I don't generally use, nor do I teach in my day job. So if, you've, if you're if you totally new to me, if you're totally new to my YouTube channel, my day job is I am an Alteryx instructor for Alteryx. None of that material will be present here. I am not here on behalf of Alteryx. Pay no attention to all the junk behind me. Some of it's Marine Corps, some of it's Alteryx. But um, I don't get paid for this by Alteryx. I don't get any extra credit at work. I don't get promotions, none of that. Um, but, but likewise, you will get no insider information from me. Not that the testing team gives me any insider information as much as I might ask. So I, I will say in, in my day-to-day -day job, what do I actually teach? Well, I teach a lot of data prep. I teach a lot of, not much spatial or reporting, but I do teach those a lot of interface tools, a lot of data investigation, some developer tools, basically no connector tools. So some of these new things on the test, you know, most of these things were already on the test, reporting, spatial, data prep, data investigation, all pretty standard. The join, the regex, it's all been there for a long time. Anytime questions came up about in database, I'm not, not real savvy on those. When it, questions came up about connectors, Questions came up about directory tool, which sadly I'm just not super practiced with. I didn't answer those questions. And the reason why is twofold. The most obvious reason was my intent was to fail the test. The kind of related but somewhat different reason is I don't want any slop. I know what I know. I know how to do apps and macros forwards and backwards. I know how to do data investigation forwards and backwards. I know spatial and reporting pretty darn well. I don't really know these other things. So if I was to just hazard a guess on an in database question, chances are I'd pick up, you know, 25% worth of slop. As it turns out, by failing with a 60%, I was pretty darn close to actually passing this thing. There was an entire practical application question that I wrestled with a little bit and then said, okay, I, I see where this is going. This is not kind of coming to me right off the bat. I wanted to sort of move on with things. I left it blank. Why? Because I wasn't going to sit there and work through it. I, you know, I'm happy to do that in 30 days when I make a real effort at the test. But I didn't want to just click an answer and have a one in four chance of just getting free points. That's not what this is about. So I, I was not in a mood to, to have slop. The other thing is I want to get out here as an Alteryx fan, as a guy that's been using the for several years, as a certified, ad, you know, advanced certification guy. I wanted to get out here and show people that it's okay to fail. I go into basically any new Alteryx test fully intending to fail it the first time. That's why I no longer, you know, put announcements out there about I'm going in for my test, wish me luck anymore. Instead, I go at it completely ironically. I'm going in to fail this test. Full stop. Because I want to give myself permission to, to fail, to do something wrong even though it's my intent. And even though I joke about, hey, great success, it's a failure. Something about it still sticks in my crawl. And I know that it does that for other people as well. I want you to get past that. I, for the most part, I have gotten past that, especially for tests that are free. If I'm paying for it, eh, it stings a little bit.
but free tests. Why not fail them? Why not? Who cares? All you got to do is wait a week to take it again. So please, I implore you, if you're following this process, a key part of the process is get in there, take the free test, fail the crap out of the thing, fail it on purpose. Just get in there to see what the questions are about, what the test is like. Because I can describe it to you as best I can. And I am not going to give you screenshots of questions. I'm not going to give you answers. None of that. I went in and I took a look at it. And now I know what I need to uh, to learn. I need to learn things like uh, blob tools. I need to learn block until done a little bit better, although we don't really use that anymore. But there are questions on there about that. I need to learn more stuff about the connector tools and, and kind of what files they deal with. There, there are areas that I need to work on. I wanted no part of free points from those questions. Zero slot. So mission accomplished there. I, I didn't want to luck my way to certification because the thing is you may have the best of intentions. You may think, oh, I definitely need to go address my weak points. Once you've got that shiny certification hung on your LinkedIn banner and it's under your belt, you and I both know, unless you have some fierce integrity or just this driving lust for learning, you ain't going back. You're not. You're going to wave that banner proudly and you're going to just go on living your life. And the only things you're going to study are the things you need to get by at work. Um, so I really wanted to master the skills required for this test and master them. I shall and we shall if you're joining me. Okay, what's next? Um, so, I mean, that was enough work for one day. I, what I have asked for the people joining this challenge is that you commit up to 90 minutes a day to study this. And I think that's enough. For people that are using Alteryx, have a core certification, this isn't your first blush at the program. You understand how to use these kind of basic tools. To, to learn this next step and these tools, I think 30 days is sufficient, and I think 90 minutes per day is going to be enough. I'm committing to an hour a day. I will definitely spend more than that getting this uh, content ready and, and talking to you good people. Um, so, you know, the, you're going to get more than 90 minutes a day out of me, but it won't be 90 minutes of just studying the subject matter, mostly because I don't have to spend all that time on it. M the more majority of the points on this test, I understand. Um, okay. So the plan going forward, and I talked about this in the first video, is we're going to study for four weeks. Here it is, June 1st for me, whatever day for you, but day one for me, and I failed the test. That was yeoman's work for the day. F easily more than 90 minutes just on the test itself, and now here I am making a video. In 30 days, on day 30 for me, June 30th, I'm going to pass this test. I mean, after tanking it deliberately and getting a 60 on pretty sure that's a, that's a foregone conclusion. You know, things happen, but whatever. I'm going to pass the test on June 30th. I may take one or two kind of practice runs just to see what the questions look like in between, just to refresh my memory. You, you only got to wait a week to retake it, and that never expires. You can fail it 50 times, and you wait a week and take it time number 51. So the plan is four weeks to study, no more than 90 minutes a day. Tomorrow, which is Sunday for me, I'm going to come back and I'm going to build out a training plan in detail. Now, the rough training plan is this. Week one, we're going to do advanced data prep, which is these tools right here. We're going to do data investigation, which is a, a fairly small part of the test. And we're going to do regex. All right. And I'll show you where that is in the training plan. But that's the plan for week one. I will tell you, let me go back to the percentages here. That right there is those are the, the key skills on the test as far as aggregate points. And I don't think it says 27% there, advanced data prep and transformation, parsing, regex. I don't think that 27% is doing it justice. There are practical application questions on those skills. You need to master those. And that's why I'm lining those up first because the actual material on them is not much. There's not a ton of tools that you need to learn, but they are tremendously important. So we're gonna do multiple weekly challenges on 
on those tools. I'll say I was, I'd edit out that cough, but I know I probably won't. We'll do multiple weekly challenges on those tools. We will do, we will go through kind of in painstaking detail those and they're, they're very important. Trust me on this. Week two, we're going to do reporting and spatial. Um, now, these seem like heady subjects and they may be subjects that you're not super familiar with. The reason why I'm combining them together is because they're predominantly only on the uh, multiple choice portion of the test. They're also kind of niche areas that most people don't use a ton. And not only am I teaching you to Excuse me. Not only am I teaching you to pass the test, I really want you to be able to use the more important tools here. When you talk about what's big on the test, data prep, parsing, um, when, maybe like join tools. When you talk about what's big in real life, yeah, those things, but also interface tools, kind of huge. Um, so those are the most important things for you to learn to actually use at work. You will you most likely not have to build apps or macros on the test, but you get a lot of questions about them. Um, so we're gonna do this part here first, along with data investigation. We're gonna do the interface stuff, apps and macros last. That way it's fresh in your mind because that's also quite important. There's a lot of questions on there and that those can be tricky subjects to master. So we'll spend some time on those. Okay, so uh, yeah, week two, reporting and spatial, week three, uh, data sources and we'll probably have it within data sources we'll probably have that uh, the in-out database uh, the the in database tools connectors and probably developer tools um, and then that last week I currently I had it stacked up in the other video with interface tool type things apps and macros in the last week and then I added developer tools Looking at it, developer tools, probably better to spend time on that that third week. That third week's gonna be kind of weekly challenge light because those are not things that are hit on the practical application. So we may do weekly challenges, probably with like dynamic rename and dynamic select. Those are easy ones to do. Okay, so there's the weekly plan. Tomorrow or in the, in the next video, whenever you watch it, I'll come out with the week one study plan in detail. Now I already have, um, like I said the other day, like Guardians of the Galaxy would say 12% uh, of a plan right here. Um, I have a learning path that I worked worked up probably six or eight months back for uh, junior instructors coming in to Alteryx on getting them advanced certified. Um, and so this is kind of a modification of that. Some of these, I need to vet some of this. I haven't done this so far, but there's some tools on here that aren't, you can see some typos there, so embarrassed. There's some tools on there that are, are no longer on the advanced test. There are some tools on the advanced test that are not represented on this. I need to clean this up a little bit. Um, but really, week one, we're essentially gonna be doing this advanced data prep and data investigation. So let me show, where, show you where we go for that. You're gonna go here to this advanced certification learning path. Um, let me back out. Learning paths, come on Wi-Fi, there we go. Okay, so you go to Learn Academy Learning Paths in the Alteryx community. You're gonna to go to the Alter advanced certification learning path, enter in. Um, now I've, here, let me exit back out. This is what you're gonna see at the start. What you'll notice is unlike the core certification learning path, it's not super sequential. You can go in any order you want. We're gonna be starting down here in the other, the, the trash can of topics. First thing we're gonna look at is formulas, i.e. multi-row and multi-field formulas right here. We'll talk a bit more about that, but if you wanna start leaning in, these interactive lessons here and the tool mastery articles are where we're gonna start. Okay, so multi-field, multi-row formulas, interactive lessons, tool mastery, you can get kicked off with that. And then the next video, I'll talk about a more detailed study plan for week one. Checking notes, checking notes. Um, yeah, so as far as aggregate points are concerned, this first week is gonna be super crucial. Um, and so here we go. Yeah, I was already watching some of the row formula stuff. Um, 
also during this week, we're going to need to do probably two or three weekly challenges. So there's the, <laughs> I had several different windows open with the, uh, the index. A couple of weekly challenges that I want to introduce to you if you want to kick off with a couple of these. None of them are particularly difficult, I would say. I have done some of them. I'll do all of them by the end of the week. But challenge number nine, oldie but goodie here, all the way back to 2016. Still working at Quantico um, as a captain. Um, if you go back to this one, this is a good uh, multi-row formula. You can see multi-field formula, I guess. Um, 193 is another. Um, yeah, so this one I think involves regex. I mean, might as well look at it. Yeah. Um, regex or just date time, but parsing and multi whatever formulas. And then this one, number 83 here, this is going to be for regex, which we'll cover a little in a little more detail at, towards the end of the week. Okay. So those weekly challenges, what else, what else, what else? Yeah, I think that's it. Tell you what, um, so uh, cresting 20 minutes here. This is a little longer. I meant to make this about a 15 minute video. I'm, I'm going to try and keep them to those as best I can. I know that the core shirt video has got a little bit long. Hey, look, I like to run my mouth and tell stories. Um, yeah, so I, I hope that this material is valuable to you. And I hope that, you know, I do a good job as your humble MC uh, talking you through it. There's nothing better for me. We did the, the core cert series last September. So that is what, over six months ago now. There's barely a day goes by that I don't hear somebody say, hey, that, you know, that really helped me or thank you for creating content or I got my core cert because of you. Um, that, that makes me feel awesome. That's, you know, it's my day job and I love it. And I really wanted to create content in, in my off time as well to help the people that I, you know, maybe can't reach as corporate clients during the day. Um, so I hope that this is helpful to you. If there's something that you want to see, go ahead and drop it in the comments. I hope that you will uh, join up with the challenge, whatever time floats your boat. You don't have to do this in June of 2024 uh, uh, synchronously along with me. Do it whenever, whenever you have the time. I'm going to go ahead and go under the assumption that anybody watching this and participating in this already has a core certification. They already understand how to download designer. Hopefully they already have it. If that's something that you need, or if it's something maybe you need a refresher, hey, it's been a year or so and my license expired, go back and watch the core certification. I will uh, link that video at the end of this one. And you can go back and, and figure out how to get a, a trial license, how to download onto your machine. I'll talk you through all of that. But with that, folks, we are embarking on another awesome journey. This is my third, third 30-day challenge here on YouTube. Hoping to do many more moving on from Alteryx and into a lot of other fields. Um, so we've done Alteryx, we've done Tableau, we'll do more Tableau. But uh, yeah, I'm probably not going to do Alteryx Expert. So when we where we go from here, it's largely going to be up to you. I have some ideas, but I'd love to hear yours. As always, uh, hit the like and subscribe button if you like this channel and uh, come visit me on LinkedIn. With that, Semper Fidelis, folks, and I'll talk to you later.